I'm Duke McDowell. I'm president of Sterling Custom Homes. I want to welcome you here to be a part of the Sterling Custom Homes Custom Home Building Seminar. Let's kind of talk about uh, how does the builder handle the, his customer care. And, uh, you know, what we want to do is we want to point out to you some of the ways that, that, that you can do it. We're not saying that this is uh, the ultimate way, but this is a way that we feel like is best to you know, to conduct your business. So a lot of builders will have their own warranty booklet standard, okay? And so the builder then hands this client this warranty booklet, uh, and he should hand it to them in, in several different times. It's on, a, it should be on their website. It should be at the very beginning of the process where we talked about in the first seminar. It should be again handed to them when they contract. It should be an addendum to the contract. And the third time is when we actually give the keys to the client and sit down with them for the final time. We should give them that warranty booklet again. It helps to find the warrantable items for the client. They know what you're going to have to do. It explains the builder's involvement, usually in this booklet. In other words, if you have a problem uh, that you have a leaky roof, okay, it goes in and says you're going to repair that leaky roof and how you're going to do it, and this is your responsibility. Um, there's also out there, there's third-party uh, warranty uh, corporations that are out there, such like a 210 warranty corporation that a builder can be a part of. They can go in and they can uh, buy these uh, extended type warranties, much like the auto business, where you buy into a uh, warranty from year two through year 10. The builder will actually pay for basically insurance in case something goes wrong with that house. He's paying, he's paying that company to insure that house so then in case something actually happens. Uh, now what we're kind of seeing our trend of our industry go to from a builder's perspective is the risk retention groups. You're starting to see some of these risk retention groups form. And what they are is basically a group of builders are getting together, good builders are getting together and saying, you know what, I, I feel more comfortable with this group of 10 or 15 builders. And what I want to do is I want to take that $1,500 or $5,000, whatever it is, and I want to put it into this risk retention group. And I want to hold that in this group. And we're going to build and pool our money together. So if anybody builds a bad product, uh, then they can have some money to actually take care of this two to ten year period of time. And it's real important, it's an interview process with all those builders to make sure that they're actually building a great product. You, you know, if I got into a risk retention group, I wouldn't want one uh, of a builder that's uh, in lawsuits every other day down at the county. We want to make sure that this is a, a good builder and we're putting our money into it and in hopes that as uh, the ten year period falls out, then we can actually get that money back. So that's kind of the uh, form of a risk retention group that's happening now. You know, as you go into the customer reporting procedures of warranty, how is that handled with the builder? Uh, at 30 days, uh, you typically will see a 30-day list of warranty items. They're usually filled out, uh, sent to the builder in some form or fashion. These are items that uh, can be of anything. Uh, some builders look at it that way. Some builders go back to the warranty booklet standard and say, okay, well, this is my standard. This is all I'm going to do. Again, internally within that organization, you need to find out what is, how do they treat the warranty? How do they go in there and they, and they feel like that that customer is number one? Do they feel like that, hey, I've got a set of standards and that's all I'm going to do? You, you need to find that out. But after the 30-day list, there's another list that usually happens, and that's the 11th month list. Uh, usually at 11 months, then you'll send another list in and say, these are the items that need to be repaired. And uh, the immediate tension items, that's real important. What you want to be able to do is have some way to communicate to the builder on immediate attention items. And those items would be items that are creating in, uh, further damage, such that maybe uh, you've got a roof leak or a, a shower door that's leaking and it's getting out into the tile and the tile's beginning to fall off. Those require immediate uh, attention. You don't want to go into something that's a 30-day or 11th month and wait that long and damage the home. So he has to have some sort of immediate attention area to uh, get to those items very quickly and move through the process. Uh, in this, uh, does he have a secure area within the website? We've kind of talked about that a few times. Does he have the ability to go for the client to go in to that secure area, fill out that 30-day form and instantly take it and it sends it to the people that, that need to know about it? And then they begin to uh, uh, create uh, uh, to-do lists within their organizations and get, get that warranty schedule for that client. It's instantaneous communication with that, with that person in that secure area. So therefore, you're going back to this same area time and time again. Uh, there's also areas in there for uh, homeowner maintenance tips. Those homeowner maintenance tips are important. Uh, what does it tell you? Well, they're, they're tips in different types of seasons uh, as the seasons change for what that homeowner should be doing. Uh, 
let's just take the, the springtime. As the springtime comes up, we all start turning on our air conditioning units. And as we turn on our air conditioning units, what happens a lot of times? You get the water backing up into a pan that's up in your attic, and maybe your float switch works or it doesn't, and then it overflows and the water starts coming down the ceiling, and now you got a screaming homeowner. But what if we gave them a tip and we said, hey guys, at the end of the, of the fall, when you begin to turn off your air conditioning, what you need to do is just go up in your attic. There's a, there's a PVC pipe up there. Just take a half a cup of Clorox, pour it down that pipe. You'll never have that problem. You do that once a year and stuff, then you don't have those overflow problems and those callbacks uh, where it's really truly not the builder's fault, but it's an area for us to help educate on the, uh, the client on those small things like that in the website. And we update that all the time. The transmittal forms, we talked about it, the 30-day and the 11th month list and media attention items. We're able to go through this website area and send those directly out uh, to the people that are concerned about it and schedule it with them. Uh, it also will have a list of your subcontractors and suppliers, your trade partners that's specific to you that were used on your job so that you then can get their telephone numbers and go down and say, you know what, hey, my air conditioning is not cooling in this area quite right. I want to just call that guy direct. Uh, you can schedule the warranty work. Okay, so now once you've gone in there and you've made your list up, I want to schedule it. I want it to, I want to go in here and you know what, I can't do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. What I can do it is on Monday and Wednesday. So you begin to schedule that warranty work for them. You know, it's an area for them to go and, and actually have control of, of their life. You know, I mean, how many times do you see where people uh, go and they sit around and they wait uh, three and four days for somebody to show up to go back there to fix something that they should have fixed the first time? I mean, that's a frustrating process. So you, you try to, in, this, in the warranty area, you try to create as much communication as you can with the client so that they know how to communicate back and forth. Let's talk just a little bit uh, about some uh, common, uh, misconce common misconceptions in the warranty area. The slab cracks. How many of you guys get the calls and stuff on the slab crack and, oh, my house is falling apart? Okay, I, you know, I get them. I mean, I'm not immune to them, but we always go out there and we look at them and we go, this is not a slab crack, guys. This is a shrinkage crack. I mean, what is the difference between a structural crack and a shrinkage crack? Uh, this is a misconception that my whole house is falling apart. It's really not. A shrinkage crack is just that. It's a, the, the concrete dried a little bit different at different times. Maybe it was a different truck or whatever. And where you see these a lot of times are where? You see them in the garage. You know, it's, it's where the customer sees it all the time. They're seeing that, and they start seeing this little crack. Uh, you know it's a shrinkage crack when it only goes about four to six feet, and it's in the middle of the slab. It, it, if it was a structural crack, it would run from one side of that slab all the way down into the exterior of the beam and run all the way down that exterior beam. Now you know you got a structural crack. That's, whole, that's totally different, okay, and stuff. And knock on wood, you know, we've never had a structural crack, never will. But uh, the shrinkage crack, you're going to have. And you're always going to get that call of, oh, my God, my, my, my house is falling apart. So uh, also, let's look into some of the sheet rocks. There's a misconception in the sheet rock cracking over headers. Okay? A lot of times when you see a sheet rock crack that goes up the side of a wall and it, it trails vertically right up the edge of the, of the sheet rock door uh, uh, trim area where the hinges and stuff are, and it goes straight up there, that's not necessarily a structural problem. That in itself can be where uh, the sheetrocker, when he went and put the sheetrock up on the wall, he stopped the sheetrock right there and then took another piece over the header and butt up to it and then put a piece of tape there. Well, that's a real rigid corner. And so if you get any type of slamming of the door or anything else, then what ends up happening is you end up getting this crack right directly above, and it usually follows the door hinge. So that's where your most pressure and stuff is on the door. But you get this little crack that goes up there and you go, oh, my house is falling apart. Well, no, it's not really falling apart. Really what it was was a bad sheetrock job. I'll tell you that. That's the truth. You know, again, that's one of the things that we don't want to have happen. We, when we go in there, we make sure that our sheetrock goes over and past the header. And we have no joints with, over that header part. And when you do that, then you don't have that problem. You don't have that cracking. Now, if you go over the header and you see a crack going out on a 45 and it's trailing out and it goes all the way up to the ceiling, you got, you got some problems, okay? Uh, you may need to look at that and, and have a structural engineer go out there and, and see what it, uh, it may be causing that. Uh, masonry is a good one. I always laugh at this one because, you know, I, I got a call from, you know, this guy was a real good friend of mine that I actually built a house for. He picks up the phone and he calls me and he says, Duke, my house just, it just split in half. I go, what? 
He goes, my house just split in half. And I go, okay, man, I'm jumping in the truck and I'm panicking all the way over there. This is a friend of mine and we had dinner a couple weeks ago and I'm thinking, well, that friendship just ended. Well, I'm going over there and I walk out there and, you know, he's kind of panicked and I walk down the side of the house and he says, look, look at this thing, man. This is just a big old crack right down there and my whole house is separated. I'm going, Danny, man, this is an expansion crack, buddy. This is, it's here. It's here by design, man. I mean, can't you tell? I mean, there's silicone in that thing. It's, it's, that's what it's designed to do is expand and contract back. I mean, we put it there. Your house is not falling apart, you know, and, a, and he's going, oh, man, I just thought for sure that, you know, my whole house is falling apart. So you, you got to think about those things, you know, and, and educate the buyer. And we learn from that experience. And now we actually walk around the outside of the house and, and show the people that and say, you know, this is, this is an expansion joint here. And there's different ones. Uh, stucco has the same issue. Okay. And so you'll have an expansion joint at the stucco as well. And so just educate that buyer and say, you know what, this is really not a structural crack, guys. This is, this is a line that's put there in masonry by design. And it's put there so that you don't have that crack that goes up that long line of masonry and you think that your house is falling apart because really that's really not the masonry is not a structural item it's a veneer it's on there and that veneer is just on there for the looks so it has no structurability to it uh, another one's trim I mean how many of you guys go out there and you look at the trim and and a lot of times you see these little cracks at the crown molding up in the corners and you think oh man this this house is having problems you know, it's starting to fall apart. Look at the corners up there. You got a little crack up the where the the, the actual trim meets on a on a 45. Well, those little cracks are are there for a reason. They actually come in, and a lot of times, if you look at the house, is it a gas house? Uh, how old is the house? Is it a couple years old? If it's a couple years old and it's a gas house, that's exactly what's happened. Is that is that wood is actually dried out? Okay, the, the, the wood in today's environment that we get is not kill drying what it used to be. And so it still has moisture in the wood. And so if you have gas heat and gas heat's out there heating it, guess what happens to the air? The actual air dries out. And so as the air dries out, what happens to that wood? It dries out too. Okay, and so as it dries out, it separates a little bit because uh, it gets smaller. Now, the difference is, 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 is your builder going to come back and fix those cracks for you or is it just going to be there? You know, in the warranty uh, guidelines on the TRCC and, and most of these limited warranties are out there that the builders do, they don't have to come back and fix it. It says in the warranty, you know, we're not uh, subject to those cracks because they won't exceed what the limit is for fixing it. Uh, we tend to come back and, and fix those because it's just a, it's an aesthetic view issue to us. You know, it, it's not a structural issue, it's just a view. And, and on the door casing, if you go and you look at your door casings up in the 45 of those casings, it's the same thing. It's where that you've gone in and, and you just dried the wood out. And as you dry that wood out, you get those cracks. So uh, if you've had wood floors and you see these old houses, a lot of times you'll go through these old houses and you'll, uh, matter of fact, just a week ago, I was in a 250-year-old house and I walked through it and I'm going, man, my customer wouldn't accept this. And then I started thinking about that. You know, I mean, it's 250 years old and it's still moving. The wood floor is still moving, you know, but that's just part of wood, you know, and that's what's going to happen. It's, it, it's going to change with whatever happens. Just like it rained today, you'll go back and now all those holes and everything else will be what? They'll be closed in. And then we get in the middle of the summer when it dries out and everything else and all the air dries out, they do what? They separate back. It, that's just the nature of that wood. Uh, as we go through it. Uh, one of the things as we uh, begin past the warranty stage, the one-year warranty, the two-year warranties, one of the things I think a builder ought to do is come in and, and say, how, how well are they committed to this business? How well are they going to stay in this business, not this year and next year, but how, how long are they going to stay in business and committed to their industry in the houses that they build? And what you'll do is you'll find some select builders that provide additional homeowner uh, maintenance and remodeling services. They'll come in and, and uh, in the remodeling side, it will schedule some maintenance uh, uh, where they'll actually produce uh, on a quarterly uh, basis. They'll come through your home and they'll give you suggestions on a checklist and say, you know what, you need to look at this. It's the old honeydew list for, the, for uh, dad, you know, on the weekends and stuff to fix. Make a list out and you'll come in and say, okay, all of these things need to be attended to before they get to a problem. Just like you go and you change your oil in your car. You do it so that your engine won't blow up. Okay, well, the same thing works in a, in a, in a uh, house and it's your major investment. You take your car, you take, a lot of people take better care of their car than they do the house. 
okay, which always surprises me. But there, there are, there are uh, pieces, there are people that will come out there and actually do this schedule maintenance for you. It's a fee. It costs, it's a yearly fee, and they come out there four times. And it's usually the reason why we do this is the, the change of seasons. It's a change of seasons. Your house is, is going to acclimate different. Uh, you know, if you have a squeaking hinge, you'll throw some a WD-40 on it and stop the squeaking hinge for you. He'll do little things, but, uh, you know, he comes out uh, a lot of times and, and, and will make that list for you uh, of the things that you should actually accomplish and, and finish up. Uh, home repairs, uh, they'll come in and, and actually do those items for you. Typically, they're charged. Uh, it may, uh, we have some clients that actually take this service up from day one when they close the house. You know, they just don't want to have to go in there and, and recaulk the shower. Or they don't want to have to go in there and, and, and look at the things that may happen to that house over time, whether it's, uh, you know, repainting the outside or recaulking the outside or recaulking your windows or repainting your stucco. These People think that, you know, your stucco, uh, when they paint it, it's there forever. It's not. You know, that stucco paint's going to last maybe five to seven years before they're going to have to repaint that whole house again. So you need to know these things, and you need some professional that's going to be able to tell you these things as you go through it. Uh, he'll also help you in leaking faucets, maybe helping you with any type of damage repair uh, that may happen. You know, uh, Junior gets out there and he slams a baseball through your sheetrock or whatever happens uh, from that side of it. He'll actually go in there and help you with repairs uh, on the house. From a remodeling side of it, we put it in place for people who are always constantly calling me and saying, you know, I love my house, I just want to remodel it. Uh, he, he actually goes in and, and our company will do uh, outside remodeling as well. But what better person to come in for the guy that uh, wants to put a room addition on? We have all the same subcontractors and suppliers we started with, so therefore we can just, it makes it real easy to go in and, and do remodels on our house. It actually makes it cheaper to do that because we know how they were wired, how, what studs are back there, how it was framed, how, you know, all of the structural issues we have plans. I mean, if you guys saw where we actually stored all of these things, we keep every one of our houses and have from the very beginning and that, and for this purpose so that we can go in and look and see how it was wired or, or whatever, uh, you know, whatever the customer may want to do in a room addition or just as far as going and replacing a countertop. Hey, you know, I cracked my countertop. Do you remember what that countertop was? You know, we can go back to our file. We can look and uh, find out what it was for them and actually put it in again with the safe uh, trade uh, contractors or the trade partner.